can you hear me and can you see my screen? Yes, you can. Uh, you are fully welcome to speak up a little bit because we hear you a little bit uh, more quiet. Okay. <laughs> okay, so, so the stage is yours. Thank you very much. Um, so welcome to the last uh, talk of this uh, um, day. Um, today I'm going to talk about uh, gyroscopes again. And um, uh, please stay tuned. It's the last one, but uh, I um, promise it won't be boring. So um, uh, let's start with the outline of uh, my talk. Um, I'm gonna first introduce what I'm doing and who I'm working with and um, how I came to this. Um, then we are going to have a look at the working principle of um, our uh, gyroscopes. We will have a look at my simulations that I'm currently doing. Um, and uh, of course, um, we will have a look uh, onto the control theory. Um, and then um, there are two ideas that I really want to share with you and um, I want to encourage some uh, discussion on those. And of course, at the end, we're going to sum up. Um, just let me just see my clock. Okay. I personally believe that it is the right time to bring quantum technology into industry. That was my mindset in 2019 when I finished uh, my, um, my master's at the Institute of Quantum Optics in, in Ulm. And I really was curious about bringing uh, qu this cool stuff that we have into industry. And um, there uh, was a great chance opened um, by Bosch and by the group of, of Dima Budka in Mainz um, to combine high-end science um, with industry and um, uh, the people who are working uh, on this is uh, Tino Fuchs, Robert Rölver, um, Janine, Riedrich Möller, uh, and of course here in Mainz, Dima and Arne, uh, Emmanuel Klinger, a postdoc and two PhD students who are working on uh, different approaches um, uh, for gyroscopes. So um, what are we pointing towards? We're pointing towards a dead reckoning system. This means that we navigate by knowing our angular acceleration and our forward acceleration. Um, therefore, we of course need very precise gyroscopes because uh, to know your position, you will be uh, integrating three times uh, over your uh, angular um, um, acceleration. So um, arrows will propagate pretty hardly, so we need to be very, very precise. Um, and what we are going to use is Lamo precession along a static bias field. Um, and as this is inertial, if our entire sensor rotates around our processing spins, we will see a shift in the measured frequency. Um, and uh, a work uh, that has shown very good values before um, has been published in 2016 by uh, Thad Walker and Michael Larson. And um, this had a bias stability of 0.02 degrees per hour and the an angular random walk of 0.005 degrees per square root hour. This is very good values uh, already in a small package and that's what we are pointing towards. If you look at this equation, what I need to mention is that we are using nuclear spins with small um, gyromagnetic ratio uh, to, um, to measure rotation because then this fact is small, so noise will not contribute so much. Uh, but then we use an in situ magnetometer, so we have rubidium that measures the field of our xenon atoms that we use it as nuclear spins with a high magnetic, a gyromagnetic ratio to get our, um, our, our signal. So how does this uh, work in details? Um, of course, we need a bi static bias field um, that gives us a, a quantization axis and that we can process along. Um, this uh, is applied to a vap vapor cell. Uh, here you can see uh, quite large ones uh, that we have produced. We, we are producing different types. We have um, colleagues that uh, are working on this. Um, with uh, filled with xenon and uh, rubidium, and actually with two uh, xenon isotopes. 
Then uh, we do uh, optical pumping um, uh, with uh, right-hand circular polarized light. Um, you might know this uh, scheme. Um, you can pump off all of the of the uh, of the sublevels of F equals two, but out of this one um, because there's no um, upper state with magnetic quantum number difference uh, of plus one. So we went end up all in this state, and we have polarized rubidium. Um, then um, by spin exchange collisions and uh, hyperfine interaction, this will uh, transfer the spin to uh, our xenon. And um, now, of course, you don't have a global phase, so you can't measure any signal. So you need to uh, resonantly drive um, the xenon uh, because we want to have a continuous signal. We don't want to have a FID measurement. Um, so we, we drive this resonantly and then, of course, if a rotation uh, is applied, you will drive out of your resonant peak and you will see a drop um, in, in, in your signal or even um, a, a change in frequency. And then uh, we can read out the optical uh, rotation by shining on a linearly polarized um, laser um, that is a superposition of left and right hand polarization that will see a different refractive indices in uh, in the vapor cells. So we, we will have a shift and an angle always shifting um, with the orientation of the magnetization. So um, how would such an experiment look? Um, of course, uh, we will have a magnetic shielding because we don't want to be sensitive to magnetic fields. Then we have different field coils inside. Um, this is just a scheme, of course, there's lots of things missing, but we will have a pump laser along a bias field and a probe laser um, that shines on top of a balance detector um, to get our signal into the FPGA. Then there is a control loop that always keeps the system on resonance to get a high bandwidth. And of course, we um, put uh, our signal, signal out. Um, and this is actually the part I am working on. And um, how can I uh, start uh, with this? Uh, I did this with a simulation in Simulink. Why am I using Simulink? Uh, this allows me to solve the optical block equations for each point in time and for arbitrary fields. Um, so I can create a signal that is also uh, including uh, several terms of noise and then design the control theory, optimize it, optimize, for example, the filter par parameters. And the good thing about Simulink is that you can directly transfer this to an FPGA and then um, run your system with it. Um, yeah. On the first two blocks, I'm solving uh, optical block equations for, um, for Xenon. Um, here, um, uh, T2 times are experimental parameters that we measure before and then plug into the, me uh, in the simulation. And um, things as temperature and polarization will uh, contribute to this uh, total magnetization M0. And we have uh, similar blocks for the rubidium part, um, but here we need to add the pumping because uh, rubidium is of course resonant uh, or almost resonant to the laser light. Then there's this part that does the laser um, readout. And the, here we have the, um, the resonance as the line width of, of, our, of our, the, our resonance line, sorry. Um, and uh, we, of course, need to uh, add some absorption and we get this shape. And then we can see that our maximum detectable angle will change with the um, applied bias field. Of course, this is uh, still a bit more because uh, the picture is done for uh, some assumptions. And uh, here in the simulation, we will really get um, the actual um, magnetization at any time. And um, and this is really important because for a sensor, we can't measure for long times. So it is really important to know what, what, what happens on a short time scale. That's why we um, don't use steady state uh, solutions to, uh, to do these calculations, but we do it uh, with um, uh, numerical simulations. 
Um, so uh, let's have a closer look uh, onto the control theory that we are actually doing. So we have the gyroscope that is the one um, I have simulated uh, before uh, that I have shown in the Simulink model. Um, and then there's, of course, this uh, very important control part. So we lock onto the parametric uh, modulation of the rubidium. Um, then we go in a phase lock loop of the xenon. And this phase lock loop has, of course, a, a, a voltage controlled oscillator that always has a resonant frequency that we can feed back to have our bandwidth extension to always drive our xenon uh, resonantly and will give us by integration our signal out. And if you look at this uh, uh, smaller plot, you can see in yellow a signal that is applied to the simulation and in red the, uh, the signal that the, that the, this lock-in and uh, phase lock loop detection uh, gives out. Um, then, um, as you already have heard in the previous talk today, um, of course, uh, we want to correct magnetic field noise as it is our main source for bias drift. Um, we can do this by um, using two xenon isotopes, and there's this great um, feature that they have different signs in the gyromagnetic ratio. So if you look at, um, at your measured rota uh, 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 your observed, um, um, uh, rotation rate, and you 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 just change to um, your your measured uh, your actual rotation. Um, you will see that uh, if gamma has different um, signs for xenon 131 and 129, um, you can cancel out this uh, uh, this uh, later term and just um, get your pure rotation rate. And that's why we're using. Um, two isotopes but uh, if you look in the, into the control theory of course you need to separate um, the, zig the signals of xenon 129 and xenon uh, 131 um, and this is actually um, quite uh, quite limiting because of course in industry we need a high bandwidth and we need a high dynamic range for our sensor so having lots of filters in the control theory is kind of critical um, and uh, this uh, will use kind of uh, lots of signals and be uh, limiting. Um, but then um, we would go on, uh, have both signals and calculate our signal and two corrections. So we, we will we'll have a feedback um, uh, of the drive of both isotopes and we will feedback a stabilization term of the bias field um, to suppress noise. So, I think I was speaking pretty fast. Um, so let me come to uh, two ideas I want to share with you. One is uh, directly in, uh, in, uh, in, in, in uh, relation to what I've shown right here. Um, if we remember our, our gyroscope here on the lower side, um, we of course uh, perform some uh, detection and then we go into our FPGA. And one idea um, would be to uh, do the closed loop feedback without going to the frequent, uh, through the frequency separation and the lock in detection of both um, uh, xenon isotopes, but directly uh, feeding back um, our, our uh, beating signal that contains uh, xenon 131 and xenon 139 to the driving coils. So this is very fast and we can always stay on resonance. Um, what is the trick about this actually is um, that um, uh, it, uh, it would be much better to, according to our, uh, the simulations uh, we have done, um, to do this not on the, on the uh, purple um, coils as we're used to, but just change the direction by 90 degrees and drive along the Y direction. Um, so you would not have um, the drive of the of always the other um, uh, isotope appearing as a tiny little uh, um, noise um, in uh, in your uh, final signal. And this, uh, as this is a resonant circuit, you, you should not include so much noise because you, you will get uh, problems with them. Um, uh, this is kind of uh, a good way to go. Second idea I want to mention is um, uh, 
why not using a gradiometer as a gyroscope? Here uh, in this paper mentioned uh, in, in the lower part, um, um, it has been shown that gradiometers can have very high common noise suppression um, of 2000 and higher. And if you think of this uh, for a gyroscope, you could just um, use two vapor cells that are initialized in such a way that they always have um, canceling signals. So for example, you just, um, um, reverse the magnetic field direction. And then you have a canceling signal, but rotation will always be the same for both vapor cells. So you can calibrate such a system very good to zero signal at the beginning, and then you will get um, a signal as soon as uh, this thing is going to start to rotate. Um, and of course, common noise, so means laser noise, um, uh, external field uh, that is um, that is the same for both uh, cells um, will cancel in the end. Okay, with this uh, I want to summarize um, and uh, give a, a little outlook. So we are currently building up um, uh, experiments and we have a simulation um, for um, nuclear magnetic resonance gyroscopes um, and in the next steps we are going to uh, put this on an FPGA, do some measurements and also include some uh, noise to be able to study how we can use the control on the FPGA to improve our signals. With this, I want to thank, uh, thank you very much for your um, attention. Thanks go also to um, uh, our partners in Maximal and uh, Milliquant project and uh, all the colleagues at Bosch and uh, in Mainz. Thank you so much. And of course, to you for listening and uh, the organizers <laughs> of uh, VOPM. Um, thank you so much. Ricardo, also thank you very much for your uh, motivated talk. And uh, the session is open for questions. I see, see already that Stuart Ingleby from Glasgow, Strathclyde University, uh, thanks you for the talk. Very kind again. Uh, what latency can you tolerate in the PLL? and frequency lock feedbacks? This is the question from Stuart. Um, uh, yes, uh, great, um, great question. Uh, I actually uh, need to say that I can't yet um, um, answer this. So, um, of course, so we are planning to have uh, the FPGA, um, so if I understood uh, the, the question correctly, to, uh, running in a megahertz, with a megahertz sampling rate. So um, each loop would be um, uh, with one uh, megahertz. But of course, um, um, yeah, to, to, to really give uh, uh, de detailed numbers we, we will need to um, to to have some measurements and also include some noise in the in the in the system to to really um, know how it uh, acts in the end I'm sorry I can't <laughs> see the chat yeah, take it easy. So I think let's say there is also note uh, uh, like Stuart. Thank you, yeah. uh, like uh, like yeah, thank you for, for this uh, this answer. Um, I encourage more questions, uh, and let me uh, also uh, allow for a question for myself here. Yes. Um, let's say you are uh, or Bosch is a business enterprise, and uh, I ask you um, two things. First of all, how big is the market? Like, do you believe this can be? Uh, entered into uh, every uh, car this is the first question and is mm -hmm. there a target price uh, which should be <laughs> should be uh, matched at some point uh, because like i think if the market is very large of course you would like to uh, sell cheap maybe this is already discussed internally um uh, yes thank you very much uh, so i i i so of course, uh, there are not uh, yet um, uh, certain values, and I, I don't even know if I, I would be allowed to tell them. But um, I can I can tell you uh, something about it because uh, so first thing is um, um, we are working on this. This means that we are believing in it, um, and okay. the second thing is. Um, uh, of course, we need to be much much cheaper um, than. Um, 
than uh, what is already in the range. So we can't be at prices of, of, of optical gyroscopes. I don't think we can uh, reach the price of uh, a man's gyroscope in the end, but uh, of course uh, it should be everyday, uh, everyday day product. So maybe an expensive one and not for the cell phone, but of course for a car. Okay, <laughs> this was not uh, not fu fully uh, answered, of course. Like maybe you, you do not uh, want to share the exact price, the time. I, I price. don't know yet. Really, okay, I, okay. I would uh, I would tell you, but uh, we're just so we are planning to have the first demonstrator uh, in, in the next year that w could be a handheld, uh, and then we will see what um, actually how the price is. Of course. Um, you can uh, produce um, vapor cells at low prices, but then you, you need to see, um, we're still in the developing phase, so maybe we will change things of the, of the final um, arrangement. Yeah. And then. Uh, of course, like uh, naturally, there is a, a great interest in the vapor cells. Um, and uh, like naturally, the question comes from uh, Leibniz, IPHT in Jena. Um, uh, what filling method are you using for the rubidium? How do you exactly, exactly, exactly do it? I'm also very interested because I'm also doing cells in Stuttgart. So uh, tell us how, how they are made. Um, so I think um, for the rubidium, um, yeah. So for these uh, vapor cells, we have uh, rubidium uh, acid. Um, and uh, then it is heated uh, and uh, you will have uh, rubidium gas in the end uh, in your vapor cell um, and uh, for the xenon uh, it's uh, for the moment um, that we just have an environment that is filled with uh, xenon gas um, so this of course is an experimental state so uh, you need to find something to do this um, without wasting so much uh, Yes. Okay, there's, a, there's another question from uh, Mark Limes, who is giving a talk tomorrow. What is your rubidium magnetometry method and what is, uh, is it limited by? Is it amenable to uh, your single axis wafer cells? Exactly, like when I even if I see it uh, like, like on the screen right now, you have kind of cross uh, yes. popping and probing. Okay, um, so uh, yes, we are always in a pump probe screen, uh, scheme. So uh, that's of course what we are planning for our demonstrator. Um, and we are, um, we are uh, able to pass through the cell um, in, with two beams just by tilting the cell. And um, then, you, you know, you just um, um, have your cell in a 45 degree uh, and then uh, you will, um, you will pass with uh, two uh, two beams. And uh, what is it limit by? Um, in what sense? Could you just um, explain? Uh, uh, let's say, of course, I think in in uh, in uh, accuracy and precision sensitivity. Uh, okay. Yeah, the sensitivity yeah. is like the, okay, the question from Mark. So uh, we don't still have uh, have. Um, uh, own values for this, to be honest. Um, uh, but um, of course, it's the same um, the same method that uh, Northrop Grumman has published. Uh, so these are the published values, um, and uh, then we will see. Uh, and it's not all optical because we have the the bias field um, applied. So um, um, just uh, maybe good picture is this one. Yeah, so you have a pump beam and a probe beam in 90 degrees, and then we have a parametric modulation and drive field, and we have a static bias field that is um, at about the amplitude of the bias field as is in the range of the uh, amplitude of the field that is associated with the xenon polarization. Good. Uh, there's another question uh, coming in from uh, Georg Bison from PSI. Yes, hi. Uh, very interesting application. Um, how do you make sure, I mean, it, do you understand this correctly? You measure the rotation around uh, a vector that is the, given by the bias field. Yes. 
So how do you make sure that the bias field is always in, this, in the direction that you're interested in? If you put this in a car, you could have external magnetic fields that uh, disturb your measurement. Yes, of course. So, um, a very good uh, question. Thank you. Um, so, uh, we have uh, mu metal shielding. So, that's what we integrate by these things and uh, four or, or three layers. Um, uh, but of course, this is our main source of noise. If the bias field, um, if, if we have field noise in the direction of the bias field, um, so you might need to to, to take care of uh, where you put uh, those gyroscopes. But um, actually, we assume that um, such a shielding uh, could be uh, very good for at least um, a pretty high. Um, uh, precision of the the entire thing. So um, I don't have any measured values, but I think we will ha be pretty sensitive. Um, even uh, and then, of course, you can um, cancel out external noise. Yeah. So if you mo have your parametric uh, modulation, you can go go uh, getting uh, uh, correction terms by the second harmonics, and then we have the two um, isotopes, and we have some canceling. Um, so in the end. I'm pretty sure uh, we um, we will cancel to a good uh, amount. Okay. okay. You uh, also, yeah. Uh, Georg, go on. Sorry. You also have to make sure that the the direction of the bias field stays the same. So you need some kind of vector magnetometry built in. Yeah. So the we do apply the um, bias field by ourselves. So it is. Um, this is a field that we that we give by a magnetic coil, and it is uh, in the system. Uh, it is given. So, and we always measure um, uh, the rotation perpendicular to this field. So this gives us our measurement direction. Okay. Uh, uh, Georg, are you fine with this answer? Well, okay. Maybe the the. Uh... Uh, requirements are not as hard as for a neutron EDM, but uh, we also apply our field uh, with a coil, but of course uh, a perpendicular field component coming through our shield, mm -hmm. even if it's strongly suppressed, uh, of course changes the magnetic field vector a little bit. Yeah, yes, you're perfectly right. So um, we do have the shield. We do have correction terms in X and Y direction that come from um, the second harmonics of the, uh, the parametric modulation. Uh, and then, uh, of course, um, we need to hope that uh, this is enough in the end. Ah, okay. Thank you. So there's another uh, question from uh, Scott Seltzer. Uh, is the precision of the gyroscope affected by the xenon polarization lifetime in such small cells. Mm -hmm. So uh, you mean uh, T2 time of, of xenon, right? Uh, yes, I guess so, yeah. Yeah, Be okay, because we, yeah, we are always um, uh, driving the xenon, so we will keep the, the xenon by somehow by um, um, always uh, in a uh, polarized state. But of course, T2 time is very important for our sensitivity um, as, um, as uh, the precision of the gyroscope. Yeah, as um, it's uh, your angular random walk scale. So with, uh, um, let me, let me, um, let me think uh, with a square root um, T2, I think. Yeah, but I T2 time will give a better sensitivity, yeah. So there are more and more questions coming in. We are a little bit over time already. I uh, only uh, read the next two questions here, uh, which is uh, from Jena, the Leib Leibniz IPHT. Uh, do you work with a wall coating to achieve lifetimes of several years for yourself? Um, okay, thank you very much. Um, I forgot to mention, so we have uh, buffer gas of, uh, nitrogen buffer gas in our cells to um, have uh, um, uh, longer lifetimes. Um, but our lifetime is actually not several years. Our lifetime in the end is uh, several seconds. That's what we can achieve. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, maybe the, uh, uh, the Jena uh, people can uh, more, get more precise if this is a, a survival time, so to say, until the, there's diffusion or anything out. 
uh, or if this is kind of uh, on the xenon polarization what is meant here. I'm also not sure. Uh, Adil uh, Miraki asks, uh, thank you for the talk. Do you consider to fill any other buffer gas? I think this was just answered. Uh, if so, can you uh, be able to see the effect by buffer gas in your simulation? Okay, so uh, for, for the coating, so um, I think we are, uh, to, yes, it's our lifetime, um, yes. Uh, so um, we are thinking about um, al al aluminum uh, oxide um, coating, but um, actually I don't know if our currently used cells have that already. Um, so we, we, but it's a very good point. Thank you for that one, because um, we of course need to think of that. Uh, sorry for misunderstanding. And uh, buffer gas, um, so uh, we are planning to have uh, nitrogen and argon buffer gas, um, where we use argon buffer gas to uh, compensate for the shift um, of the, of the, uh, from the buffer gas. And um, if so, can you, are you able to see the effect of buffer gas in your simulation? Yes. So, um, I, in the simulation, I have uh, so I have lots of parameters, but it can make all of them variable. So I could um, um, so of course, if it's if it's if it's um, if it's a static difference, um, you can just change your values for the for the certain. Um, um, so as it's uh, in the case for the gas, you can just uh, change the the values in the pre-calculation and then you will see the, uh, the difference in the outcome. But um, you could also go for temperature and then uh, add some, some white noise and you will see uh, the end in, for example, Allen deviation plot. Yes. So yeah, we can see it, but you just uh, change the math. Good, I think uh, that's uh, that's about it. Uh, also, Leibniz EPRT, uh, thanks you for, for this answer. Um, and I think there was another question regarding the cell size, but I think this is mostly given by your application. Yeah. So, uh, Ricardo, thank you so much for your presentation. Uh, I would uh, like to close the first day. Still, I... Uh,